Oh, yeah, that's good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now we're on. So please, Susan. Uh, Susan? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I'm here, but uh, Nico is the first speaker, so he's okay, going to sorry. start. <laughs> and I'm, I'm running the first. Um, hi guys, um, thanks for starting us uh, and um, uh, all thanks for joining this webinar. It's entitled Mapping Environmental Media and Art Practices. We'll have three presenters. I'll go first. Faya will do a second part. Susanna uh, will do the third part. Uh, and the fourth part is actually also a bit of an interactive moment where we'll try to extract some ideas from all participants. So be warned, it's um, not one directional, it will go into two directions and uh, we'll, we'll ask you some questions uh, near the end to put you to work. But let me start uh, with, with the uh, first part. And uh, Susanna, next slide, please. Okay, it's working before. Yeah. So what we want to talk about during this webinar is uh, what within Work Package 5 of the Mr. Environmental Communication Research Program, what we've been doing, uh, and, and that is a mapping sub-project. Uh, and we want to introduce some of, of the basics of, uh, of mapping first. Um, one of the problems of mapping research is that it's quite general. Uh, it, there are many, many different labels being used and many different ways of doing mapping. And one example that you see on the slide is what you find in geoinformatics, um, where GIS is uh, used quite frequently to literally add layers to maps uh, with, on the basis of um, statistical data. For instance, when you can map out poverty in a city. So that's something you find used quite often. In other cases, it's used almost as synonyms to survey, taxonomy, typology, ways of categorization. But the way that we try to use it is moving away from uh, these concepts and is trying to look not so much at the categorization as a starting point, but at the discovery of particular units, uh, particular entities. And there's little attention for these kinds of approaches uh, uh, from a methodological perspective. And if you can go to the next slide, I can show you a few examples. What we do find are a number of cases, for instance, uh, Sotere Proctor's work on mapping organizations below the radar. We find uh, examples in Scotland, uh, mapping, a mapping project of disability organizations. Um, but we also find actually a lot of mapping projects. Um, for instance, the mapping of nonprofit organization in Greece, the mapping of community media in, uh, in Europe by the, the CMFE. Uh, next slide, please. We've been using these mapping methods for quite some time to map uh, community media organizations in Cyprus, for instance, uh, but also to map uh, educational projects that are related to peace education in Cyprus and community broadcasting groups in, uh, in Israel. Uh, and finally, mapping uh, civil society organizations and the way that they use online engagement. Uh, but it's the first uh, article that I mentioned, authored by uh, Vanyati Dozaki and, and myself, that actually has the methodological discussion on, uh, on this uh, kind of mapping approach. Next slide, please. And now uh, before I go into explaining uh, in like the two seconds I have left, explaining some of the details of, of these mapping methodologies uh, in the way that we are using it, I, I want to use this Borges quote as sort of a reminder that no map is perfect. The story of that Borges, and this is the full short story that Borges wrote, um, it is about the creation of the perfect map. And the emperor invited the geographers to create the perfect map. They first decided to build uh, a copy at the size of a city, then a province, and eventually they realized that the only way to create a perfect map was to uh, build a copy 
of the empire itself, which then bankrupted the empire. Uh, uh, we all only find the tattered ruins of that map. And it's actually a nice reminder that no map is perfect, that no representation is total. And I think it is important to, to mention that. If you go to the next slide, though, uh, I can explain in three, uh, actually in five points, how we've been using these mapping methodologies driven by the creation of a clear definition of a social entity, in our case, uh, art projects um, and different kinds of uh, media practices. We need an operational definition, but we also need a clear definition of the population that we want to map, literally. We need a registration instrument. That's the third step, which is called a mapping index card. That registration element, in a very quantitative way, being a survey to the researcher, allows the use of multiple data sources, multi -data, multiple data gathering techniques, so that the map can then be the MIC can then be filled out together, creating a map of the social entity that is being mapped. At the end of that mapping stage, what you can then do is to use the contents of these mix as data. So redefining them as data, uh, analyzing them from quantitative or qualitative uh, perspectives. And I should now give the floor to Faya. I think we can move on. Um, yep, we can go one more. All right. Yep, that's so, fine. So, okay, uh, in our project, we try to identify the art projects and specific uh, types of media, audiovisual media, uh, uh, television series and serials, uh, documentary and social media, uh, Facebook groups, YouTube uh, channels and blogs uh, that have been addressing the environment in Sweden in the past year. So in order to do that, we have uh, clearly described what uh, each of these areas uh, is by developing, as we call them, operational definitions uh, for each of uh, what we have labeled uh, mapping unit. Uh, and for example, you see the operational definition of YouTube channel there. Uh, and we have also developed, formulated additional definitions, operational definitions of uh, for, the, uh, for certain elements or concepts that are in the general uh, definitions of each mapping unit that might need clarification. For example, uh, what art is, television, genre, etc. Uh, we can move on to the next. So uh, then in order to identify these art projects and media products, we have developed a list of selection criteria for each one of them. Um, uh, for example, uh, as you see the, uh, there, a YouTube channel uh, should be uh, registered as public, should be explicitly addressing the environment, uh, should have ex an explicit connection with Sweden, either in terms of language uh, or the producers that are involved or the, the content. Uh, it, it needs to be about Sweden hum, somehow. And it needs to have um, some volume, so some videos in the last... Uh, uh, year. And yes, we have developed also some more operational definitions addressing again some concepts or elements that might be in this selection criteria that are not that straightforward. For example, what is the environment or what is uh, primary uh, concern, uh, etc. So for a uh, potential art project or media project to be mapped, it needs to fulfill all our listed criteria. Uh, we can move on. So our mapping procedure includes three stages. In the first stage, we, uh, as we could call it, fish for information about potential art projects and media prod uh, products through uh, online research, uh, searching online, I mean, uh, examining media coverage, but also talking to people uh, who can point us to these projects and products, but also to other people that might know or might be involved. Uh, in these art projects and media products themselves. Uh, so practically we use a fishing method and a snowball method to gather information. Uh, we can move on. Uh, in the second stage, uh, we want to confirm our first list, the, the list that we have created in the first stage, uh, and we want to expand it. So we do additional uh, online search and we again talk with people in this case 
uh, involved in the initially registered the art projects and media products. Uh, and then after we have our expanding list, we test it, we check it using our selection criteria that I mentioned earlier. And if an item, for example, a YouTube channel fits all our uh, selection criteria, then it is uh, a unit to be mapped, an item to be mapped. Uh, we can move on. So finally, we reach, we reach stage three. Uh, at this stage, we have longer uh, interviews with people that are engaged uh, in our mapped uh, art projects and media products to gather more in-depth information about our mapped units. And uh, we fill in uh, one, as Nico already introduced it, make a mapping index card that includes all relevant information about uh, each mapping map unit. We can move on and show quickly an example of how this looks. It is not a full uh, make, but it gives a, uh, an idea of its uh, main area. So here we have, we gather information, uh, all relevant information about its map unit, let's say YouTube channel that has both basic descriptive information, what it is about, uh, what videos does the YouTube, does this uh, channel uh, post, publish, but also uh, we try to gather uh, more qualitative information that is close, still in a quantitative manner, that is close to our research, area, uh, research questions. For example, in, in this case, how the, uh, this specific YouTube channel constructs the environment. And I should now give the floor to Suzanne. Okay, thank you, Vaya. So, okay, so I'm going to show you some examples that we've picked up from our mapping. So uh, my colleague, Daria and I, we've started this first stage of the mapping, uh, finding potential units, which you've done through internet searches. So, uh, I'll start with art projects. So we have uh, this installation by The Party Is Over by artist duo Birgit and Bagstrom. And they create images and objects representing environmental issues. And this is a wind chime made out of crab claws, oysters and balloons, basically waste left after a party. And it's part of the exhibition Silent Spring, which is a group exhibition at Dew Gordon, which was in April this year. So here both the work on its own and in the exhibition, the exhibition as a whole could probably be considered a unit. Uh, the second example is from the artist collective Intergalactica and who've created a research platform that uses collective and performance-based artistic research to investigate their surroundings and how the social and place interact. So they focus on site-specific research and in September 2019, they held a one-day event at Bustoriet in Östersund, which included interventions and performances that were reflecting on the physical and social spaces around the bus station, alongside talks and workshops under the title Ecology of Violence. And then there's a fictional VR travel agency, Time Travel, by Gallery Extra, uh, which is a project by Mamo Best artist Johan Lundin and his collaborators. So visitors can travel to a fictive destination using VR called Extra City. And this art service works similarly to a regular travel agency. And for example, visitors can choose and book a trip from a catalog, but instead of traveling to the destination, the artists will come to them and then they can go there via the VR. Then we have uh, mass media. So the first example, we have a TV series, Nedslekt uh, Land, or Country Unplugged, as I translate it, a kind of reality TV show mixed with a social experiment. So you have two teams. One is an, uh, in an uber modern smart house, and the other gets put in a renovated traditional log house. And they have to manage to satisfy their basic needs after the electricity is cut off. Uh, unexpectedly and without any warning uh, and they think it's a real thing happening they don't realize it's an experiment so the program follows how the participants react and they try to solve the situation and it combines this with interviews with experts on how groups and society deal with crisis and conflict uh, then there's a four-part series called report from 2050 which combines facts and fiction using creative journalism so the two reporters test ways of living sustainably according to the climate goals for 2050 in regards to work, travel, food and living. And then they report back from the future throughout the program and talk to experts about what 
they predict will be the lifestyle changes Swedish society will have to adjust to in order to meet these climate goals. And then there's a documentary film called Kiruna, A Brand New World, which uh, addresses and bears witness to the current conflict that has arisen between humans and nature in the city of Kiruna as a result of mining. So big changes are facing this city as part of it has to be moved due to the dangers of earth collapse caused by the coal mine, which is situated beneath it. And the film follows the lives of three protagonists who are residents in the city. Uh, then we have social media. Uh, and here we're looking at the three formats of communication, YouTube, channels which are usually run by individuals or organizations. For example, Naturskyddsföreningen or the Swedish Society of Nature Conservation, they produce informative videos or recordings from their events and have interviews with experts on a variety of topics about the environment and then they make them available on their channel. Uh, second, we have blogs, which can be either amateur or professional, they can be run by individuals or groups, and such as this one, it's called Klimatoplysningen, something like the Climate Enlightenment, and this blog focuses on non-mainstream perspectives and is run by a collective of professionals who write opinion pieces and they articles from like a climate realist perspective. Uh, and this includes commentary on climate reporting, summaries of Swedish publications in foreign languages, as well as images and cartoons referring to the climate debate. And third is uh, Facebook groups, which tend to be set up around a particular theme, uh, shared interest or activity. And here people post articles, engage in debate and discussion about climate issues or ask for advice about sustainable options for consumption. They might inform about events, uh, share educational material, and in general, they just act as a space for people with common interests and values to interact and exchange information and knowledge. So like we have the global uh, goals for sustainable development. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, like one for uh, non-binary sustainable people or a uh, sustainable entrepreneur. And so as the last part of our presentation, uh, we'd like to yeah, uh, pick your brains, maybe have a bit of a brainstorm. So uh, we have these three areas, the art projects, TV series, and documentaries or social media. So uh, if you, if, and these are, we're mainly looking in the past year. So if you have, does anyone can think of a art project, exhibition project uh, they've seen in the past year, which, uh, and you could put it in the chat. You might um, have a think about it, maybe a quick Google if, if you can't quite remember the name. Uh, since, so, or. Hello, Susan. Hello? Uh, yes, yes. Or is the presentation uh, uh, finished uh, or? Uh, well, I think this is part of the presentation. Uh, uh, no, Nico? Uh, um, I would say too, yes. <laughs> we like the, yeah, we'll have a few, we have, have a few minutes for questions at the end, like maybe 10 yep. minutes at the end. So. Uh, yeah, because we have, uh, we now have uh, eight minutes left uh, for, for discussion. So I think that you would like to use that time also for this brainstorming. Am I right? Well, I think we had uh, somehow scheduled the webinar until quarter to uh, like 13.45, no? Or, um, oh. I mean, it was 20 minutes for, okay. Oh, it's okay. Uh, so I, I think it, it, if we're finishing at uh, quarter to uh, two, then maybe we can do a little brainstorming. And if we need to finish earlier, yeah, and definitely. Yeah. Questions, but, um, so, uh, yeah, so. But we also have an input on the social media <laughs> for you. Yes, okay. So you ha we have something for social media. Yes, because yes. uh, at WSP, there's an ongoing uh, drive on water issues right now. I think it's mostly LinkedIn and maybe Twitter. Okay. Yeah. 
Yes, and and as actually in the newspapers as well, yes. uh, occasionally like Dagens Industri and and mm. uh, um, the daily newspapers and the Metro as well <laughs> and the Metro as well. Um, so uh, I think that would be a, a, a environmental communication in its ace, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, so, but do you have any presence in any of these like a Facebook group or? Um, uh, on YouTube or a blog about it uh, where it's collected or um, be, because the thing is that we're actually only looking at those three platforms uh, because we again with the map that can't be complete we can't look at absolutely every channel uh -huh. of social media well we're not on Facebook I'm pretty sure but maybe YouTube I think there might be things. yes mm -hmm. Uh, we can have a look and you can continue with the other ideas maybe while I do this. Okay. Oh, there are comments here. I'm getting some examples. Mm -hmm. uh, coming up here. Oh, great. Yes, From, great. Uh, are, are, uh, can you see this? Okay, so yeah, I, I can see the chat window. So, yes. so we have this uh, fact movement huh. on sustainable uh, fashion Swedish fashion mm -hmm. on Instagram. Great. Uh, then there is sensing nature from modern mm -hmm. in in Malmö, which is the art. Mm -hmm. And there is okay. uh, oh from you no. Not sure. is, okay, this is an exhibition as well. I hope I can get there that. Yours can we see it in um, in Gothenburg? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking for exhibitions, the plastic rather recently. Yes, climate imaginaries. And, uh, and mm -hmm. I visited the photo exhibitions uh, at Fotografiska. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yes, uh, the photo exhibitions are fine. So, Christian. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, what else do we have? We have. Uh, trädet står ljust, grönt Bonniers konsthall. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Stavanger uh, Art Museum. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in environmental humanities. Mm -hmm. Biotopia on YouTube. Um, okay. It's still smart, uh, mm -hmm. which is on Instagram. And that's from Naturvårdsverket, uh, but the link is to... Uh, yes, sometimes they have, uh, I think Naturvårdsverket has a YouTube channel as well. Like often on, there's ma on many, several platforms. Actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are wonderful links. Thank you. Okay, so... Um, Yes, so thank you. And you can, of course, also um, send us uh, uh, links if, if you uh, think of something afterwards. Uh, I'm sure we can make available, like, in, like you, um, I can uh, yes, and my uh, email. Klund was sending in from Fotografiska a link. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll check the links uh, afterwards. Uh, I'll just write down there. And was there any TV series or documentaries that uh, you can think of? Mm. Where? On um, sustainability. Is, is there anybody else or, in the audience or participants who have any? Um, what about the uh, the Handmaid's Tale? It's quite interesting. Ah, well, I'm not sure if that's Swedish, but oh, well, from a sustainable point of view. Aha, um, uh -huh, here's a, a program. Hello, uh, Tun Eats. Yeah, hello. Mm -hmm. um, hello. This is Paula. Um, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, Paula. and um, I mean there are several. Sami artists that I think you, you should mm -hmm. mention and and they they often they always deal with those environmental issues like mm -hmm. Katarina Pirak Siku mm -hmm. and I, I, I wrote here, uh, yeah. 
and um, mm -hmm. also, uh, I mean, she 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 deals with the uh, uh, the mining mm -hmm. industry. Then you have a uh, gallery sister. Do you mm -hmm. know them? Gallery sister. Uh, not this one. Yeah. No. Gallery sister. They they have a lot of exhibitions, and they 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 do uh, artworks themselves on mm -hmm. environmental issues. Uh, the last Moderna Museet um, exhibition, you know, when mm -hmm. they collect different artists, mm -hmm. you can find some of them. Uh, earn. Uh, I also, so it, I think it depends. I think, uh, this Earn, was this this uh, Rotan and... Um... Anja Earn. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think I, I found yeah. them the other day. And um, and Thomas Earn, uh, no? yeah, yeah. He's like a and, duo. And her um, the, the colleague, they made a big work on a big mining place in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. um, I myself did an exhibition two thousand and four called Geography of Voices, mm -hmm. and it dealt very much with environmental issues at Studio Forty Four, and um, and it also dealt with the. Um, environmental injustice mm -hmm. so that was geography voices and it was uh, yeah and um, <clears throat> then you have Helena Hildur I mean there's a, a long list of artists also artists working um, you know outside in the countryside mm -hmm. so <clears throat> So uh, actually, I've, I mean, I can write you a, a long list with artists would, like, do you know, Caroline Mortensen? Mm -hmm. okay. Do you know her? And uh, Marlene Lobel. They've been, I mean, many of them, Marlene been working with the environmental issues for 20 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a wonderful list. If, if uh, we'd be very, very happy to to get this uh, list from you, I could maybe do a small short interview with you also about it. Okay. Um, yeah. We'll be in touch. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank so you so much. I'm sending you. Uh, so I, I think I think we we sort of wrap. We'll have to wrap up yeah. this first part. Mm -hmm. uh, but just two thoughts. I think you've now sensed the actual experience of mapping uh, and this is what we in a way wanted to to demonstrate it can be slightly boring because it's dealing with lists uh, and generating lists uh, but it's also dealing with an abundance of material um, and it's not a surprise again to see the list of, of art projects uh, being very very uh, extensive uh, and our, one of our problems of doing actually these kinds of mapping is is that abundance of data it's how to process all these great examples in a systematic way not leaving out uh, and that's where the operational definition is also protecting us but i i think we try to give you some flavor um, of what it means to do this kind of mapping and i'll, I'll be happy to uh, open up the floor for questions Yes, so we will now uh, um, close the recording and uh, continue on with the discussion. Um, uh, yes. it, would it be possible for WSP to ask the first question?